In this lab, you're going to be determining the atomic weight of tin by its combination with tin oxide. You're going to need to mass the amount of tin first. Of course, you're going to tear the scale and you're going to mass the evaporating dish and watch glass first. Then you're going to add the tin and get approximately one gram of tin. Be careful to do this with the scupula and once you finish, you can just put the watch glass back on top. Now would be a good time to mention some safety precautions. You should have on goggles and aprons are available if you want them. Remember, you're working with 8 molar nitric acid, which is pretty concentrated. Make sure that you've recorded both the mass of the evaporating dish and watch glass, as well as the evaporating dish, watch glass, and the tin. You can record these in the table that you've already made in your chill. Now you would go to the hood. In the hood, we have the nitric acid. You need to bring your beaker and use a graduated pipette along with a pipette pump. You'll use the wheel at the top to suck out the nitric acid. You're going to put it into the small beaker and you're going to release it using the button on the side. As you can see, it's not a very large amount. Then you expel the little bit that's left in the end of the graduated pipette in back into the nitric acid and put it back into its paper sleeve. Don't forget to put the top back on the nitric acid when you are all finished. Now add just two to three milliliters of nitric acid to the tin. It will begin bubbling and give off the nitrogen dioxide gas, which is brown, it's irritating and toxic, which is why we're doing it in the hood. After it has settled down a little bit, you can take the watch glass off. I would recommend turning it upside down and setting it on a pencil so that it'll be easier to pick up once it's already been down. Then you add the rest of the nitric acid to the tin. Once you've finished, you add the watch glass back on top and you're going to set it onto the hot plate. There are several in the hood. They can hold two to three per hot plate. The heat needs to be at level two to start off with. You want to gently angle the watch glass so that some of the fumes will get out. After it's heated for about 10 to 15 minutes, you'll take it off. And you're gonna notice that there's still some moisture in there. You're gonna to need to heat some more but turn it up to level four so that you can drive off moist, most of the moisture and that way you can avoid spattering. Once it's heated and most of the moisture is driven off, you need to light your Bunsen burner and put your watch glass on top of the wire mesh gauze. The reason that you want to drive off most of the moisture is that it so it doesn't spatter. When I did this lab, I lost some of my sample because it spattered out the one of the small cracks between the watch glass and the evaporating dish. So you put it over the heat and then you let it heat probably for five minutes at a time. Keep a close watch on it. If it starts giving off a lot of the brown gas, you need to take it back into the hood and put it back on the hot plate for a while until no more brown gas comes off. Then bring it back and put it onto your Bunsen burner. Once it's finished with that, Take it off of the flame and let it cool on the table. After it's cooled for about five minutes, you're going to need to mass it on the scale. Make sure that you record this mass. Return the evaporating dish back to the Bunsen burner and heat for another five minutes. Then let it cool, then mass it again. Make sure that you repeat this process until the masses are 0.02 grams difference from each other. This is called heating to a constant weight and ensures that all water has been driven off. Now, please go and take the quiz to make sure that you have completed everything before the lab.